So as I said, Akedas Yitzchak. There are so many details. There are so many relevant messages to today that it's quite fascinating. What's the story? After these events, many kinds of events, one of them is a very interesting matter that it says that as Rashi brings it over here, that Ishmael told Yitzchak, who do you think you are? I, at the age of 13, I consciously, as an adult, knowingly, understanding the difficulty and the dangers and the pain, I did Rismila. You did it as a little eight-year-old boy. You had no choice about it. You had no say in the matter. So Yitzhak responded to him, Indeed, I recognize you did something which is quite impressive. You did something which is commendable, but... Don't compare yourself to me. I am willing to give my life for the Ebishter. If the Ebishter would ask me, not just to do circumcision, but to give my entire life, I would do it. You would not. After Advarim Eile, the Ebishter comes and calls Avram Avinu, go and offer a curtain of your son. And as the Prophet says, Bincha, Yechitcha, Asherahavta, Asyitzchak. Your son is your once only son that you love, Yitzchak. Velech lecha el Eretz Amoria. And go to Eretz Amoria. What means Velech lecha el Eretz Amoria? Should say Velech el Eretz Amoria. Go to work, to Eretz Samaria. Don't, don't, don't go to yourself to Eretz Samaria. Same question as well, which is true on Pasha's Lech Lecho. Why does it say there Lech Lecho? But here we find the exact same wording. The Lech Lecho El Eretz Samaria. In other words, there's something here in this particular journey, in this particular, I should say, in this particular request, that you will go to your own deeper yourself. What are you going to do in Eretz Samaria? You will there bring him as a sacrifice, as an offering. Avram Avinu gets up in the morning full of, full of enthusiasm. As Rashi says, Bizrizus. Nizdar is le mitzvah. He was all excited. He is in, a, in an enthusiastic mood to go do this mitzvah. He didn't wait for anybody to help him. He does it all by himself so as to really get going quickly. He takes his donkey and he takes it to the Arab, Shmuel and Eliezer, and his son chops the wood and he goes. Then the Pasuk says, by Yoim Hashlishi, on the third day. In other words, he has been traveling already for three days. Vayisa Avram, Esen of Avram, lifts his eyes. Till now, was he looking down? And then he sees Vayar Samaka Merachik, and he saw the place from far. From after those three days, and now he sees the mountain from far. How long did it take him from there to get the place? He's walking ready for three days. How much longer did he walk? There's no, there's no indication of how much of that. We know the rest. On the way, Yitzchak finds out that he's actually going to be this carbon. Yitzchak Yitzchak goes with the same excitement as before, knowing now that he is actually going to be the carbon. Avram already has the chalif, has the knife in his hand. A malach stops him and says, don't do it. I was just testing you. Now I, now I know that you really, you really came out. Atto yodaiti. Now I became aware. Ki really came out. Why? And you have not spared your son, your only son, 
for me. The rest of the story we know, there's an aisle, there's a ram, sacrifices. The ram with the two horns, the shoulder horn for Matan Teure, the longer horn for Moshiach, and everybody's going to be blessed with. Baruch Hu Kol That's in brief the famous story of Akedas Yitzchak. There are so many questions that we can ask on Akedis Yitzchak. Who is the test for? Only Avram Avinu? Not Yitzchak? Seems to be that the whole test was just about to Avraham Avinu. I think that there is an equal or at least similar value to the test of Yitzchak. Why is it called Avraham's Nisoyen? Now, if you're going to tell me because the Ebishter originally didn't tell Yitzchak, he only found out inadvertently by having asked the question, and Avram actually didn't give him a straight answer. Avram Avinu says, Elikim yira loy hase lo bini. So he insinuated, lo bini, bini, you will be the oila. So Avram, Yitzchak figured it out. But even assuming if he wouldn't have known till he's actually, Avram is taking and lying him down on the wood and ready to shach them. He's not a baby. He's not eight days old. He's 37 years old. A mature adult, he could easily tell his father, Tata Ziza, sorry, I'm not interested. He doesn't do that. Not only doesn't do that, but he's asking, please tie my hands. I should chas not move, so the carbon should be a kosher carbon. So why is this not a test also attributed to Yitzchak? Why do we always speak about a sorrow disyonis, about a ten test, the ten disyonis that Avram Avinu had, and the last one is considered this one? As they say in Yiddish, Yitzchak and Shama is a Rajinke. Doesn't Yitzchak also deserve some credit for this? So somehow it seems like the issue is all about Avram Avinu. Let me ask you a further question. From Hebron, where they're coming, to Yerushalayim, to Hara Maria, is approximately 30 kilometers, 20 odd miles. For somebody who is rushing to go do the mitzvah, this should take no more than a few hours. A person could comfortably walk three to four kilometers an hour, comfortably, even five. Six hours, seven hours, take a break, a day. He lost the GPS and he didn't know where to go. He lost the direction. What did it take him three days? And then it says, then he raised his eyes by Yis Avram and say, no, Avram picked up his eyes and he saw the mountain. Why did you pick up your eyes earlier? So what happened during those three days? Says the Medrash, that the Satan was putting all kinds of obstacles. The Satan was continuously creating events, putting roadblocks, for him to stop him from going. One of them, as we know, was suddenly there is a river. There is a body of water. So the matter says that Avraham Avinu sees this water, tells Yitzchak, and he tells whoever is along with him, we continue. We are continuing to walk. And he's walking into the water deeper and deeper and deeper till it comes. The water is all the way to his nostrils. That time, I guess, still his mouth, because it would be to his nostrils. He couldn't be talking. So he's there all the way in the water till his mouth, and he's ready to continue walking. And he turns around to the Ebishter and says, Rabbi Shalom, you have given me a mission to accomplish. I'm on a journey, I'm on a way to accomplish your mission, which is, okay, the Sitzchak. I'm continuing to go. I'm walking. This is the way. There is no other way. So, if I'm dying 
I'm drowning in this water, that's your, that's your concern. I am walking. Simple pshat that's given why Abraham Avinu said he's continuing to walk, because it says, Lech lecha, walk. But let me ask you a question. He has a mission to accomplish. How is he endangering his mission by just walking blindly into the water? You know that walking into the water, you won't come out so quickly from the other side. You're endangering your mission that you have to do. Find a way how to overcome this water. Swim. Find a piece of wood, float over it. Do something. There's ways to cross the water. There's ways to cross. It's not an infinite there's no such thing as an infinite ocean. But it's not a huge ocean. It cannot be more than a few kilometers at most. Find a way you have to get over it. And there's an interesting halacha, by the way. A father has basically three obligations to his son. Teach him Torah. Teach him a profession. And to teach his son how to swim. These are the three obligations that a father has. Now, Torah is obvious. Profession is to be able to make a livelihood. Swimming represents how to go through life. Swimming through the Mayim Rabim, so to say. Facing all challenges, facing the battles of life. But it means actually also physically, simply swimming. Kimo of Eskola Terekula. As we know that our always did all the mitzvahs, so he presumably also taught Yitzchak how to swim. Yitzchak is not a baby. He's 37 years old. Usually you start teaching swimming at a much earlier age. You don't start teaching your son swimming at 45 years old. So by now Yitzchak, Avram should have taught him how to swim. And so Avram and Yitzchak knows how to swim. Yishmael too, it's his son, he's got to teach him too. Maybe the chamor won't know. So leave your chamor, finished. Eliezer maybe doesn't know. Leave Eliezer here. But go do something proper. He can't swim. Tear off a branch from a tree and float over the water. There are many ways how he could have gotten over this water without telling the Ebishto, I'm walking into the water and if I'm dying, too bad. And that would be your responsibility. No, it's your responsibility, Avraham Avinu. You have a mission? Find a way how to accomplish it. I didn't ask you to die on this mission. I asked you to get there and offer Yitzchak. I didn't ask you to offer yourself dying in the water. So it's not just a matter that he's willing to die for it. He's not allowed to die for it because he won't accomplish his mission. Don't be a tzaddik by doing something which will stop you from doing what you're supposed to do. So what is the idea here? Then it says further in the Medrash. So whatever, whatever it is, we'll get back to it in a moment. So this is one of the things which slowed him down. In other words, he's walking in the water. Then he has this conversation with Ebishto. But interesting, as soon as he has this conversation with Ebishto, the water disappeared. But I guess they took some time. Maybe to dry up. It took some time. So this extended the walk, slowed him down. But then it says something else interesting in another medrash. But it says, Vayares Amokem Mirochoik, which translates as, My Avram Avinu saw the place from far. In other words, he saw it from a distance. And Rashi gives different explanations, but the simple shot is seeing it from far enough, but getting there. Because he realized that now I'm arriving, he told Eliezer and Ishmael and the Hamar, you stay here, we'll, I'll see you soon. The Medrash says that we read the word Mirachik a little differently. Marchik. Marchik meaning distancing. And every time Avram Avinu was coming closer to the mountain, the mountain moved back. It was getting further. And Avram noticed that. Avram realized 
something most unusual is happening. And this was not an imagination. It wasn't some kind of a visual trick. It was reality. Because he knows how long he walked. He knows where he's supposed to be. He should be there already. I'm walking a day. I should be by Maria. So every time he's getting close, bingo, it goes further and further for three full days. And that's what the Madrash explains why it took him such a long time. Because the Satan was continuously creating all kinds of obstacles to stop Avram Avinu from his determination, from his commitment, from his enthusiasm to go and do the mitzvah which the Abishta wants him to do. What's the idea of this Nisoyen? So the first Nisoyen is the question, why did Avram not find a way how to overcome it? The second about this Nisoyen, the question is, what is the idea? What's the purpose? Just to delay it? Once, twice, but three days? Three full days to delay it? He sees it's already going. Okay, you tried, it didn't go. Try something else. So there's something here about the delaying which plays an integral part, an important part in this Nisoyen. Finally, they arrived and Yitzhak is already ready to be offered, to be sacrificed. And Malach says, Stop! Don't do it! Vayikru Elov Malach Hashem in Hashemayim and Avram says his usual statement, Hineni, Alti Shachat Do not do it. I know that you're God fearing. Yireli Kimata. Avram looks around and he sees Ram, and then again, Vayikra Malach Hashem and Avram, Shein Nismin Hashemayim. Another conversation, and that's when he gives him the blessing, and so on. So there's a very interesting medrash here. When the first time Avram Avinu heard the Evishter's voice not to shecht his son Yitzchak, Avram Avinu said, excuse me, who are you? He used to be a chassid in New York, Rabbi Schol Duchman. His English was very special. So when he wanted to ask somebody who you are, he used to say, who you? Who you? So Avraham Avinu asked this malach, who you? Who are you to tell me not to share? Were you the one to give me this message? Who told me to go do the Akedah? You, malach, or the Ebishter? Says, no, here is Hashem. The Ebishter, we have a problem, and we have says Avraham. The Ebishter himself, he says, I'm sorry, malach. If I have a shlichus from the Ebishter, no malach will stop me from doing what I'm supposed to do. That's why it says, shame is, the malach came a second time. And that's when Avraham Avinu realized this must be shame is, min ha as it says. A second time in the first verse, it says, also says, right? But then he realized that this is not just any malach, that this is coming from the Ebishter too. So he accepted. So we have over an interesting point that we have a shlichus from the Ebishter. Nobody can come and stop me. Only the Ebishter himself can come and stop me. But we'll get back to this. So let's go back to the beginning of the few questions that we asked. We asked about the three days and we asked about the not swimming not finding a proper, natural way how to get over this Nisoya. There's a Maimah from the Rebbe. Mugelike Maimah, Mesante Lerech, or Neslis Neslis. Where the Rebbe discusses the difference between Avodis Abirurim and Avodis Anisianis. Between what it means, the work of Elevating the world, sorting the birurim of the netzutzes, elevating those sparks, which by shviras hakelim, by the creation of the world, when there was a shviras hakelim from olam atoyu, and he fell all over the world, and now we have to do it into olam atikun and repair and elevate those sparks. 
That's one Avoida. And then there's the Avoida of Nisyanis. And the Rebbe explains. There's two kinds of Nisyanis. There is a Nisoyan from a Dover Gashmi, from a Gashmi's Dika object, a situation, which is real. And this stops us, or this challenges us of doing what we're supposed to do. So we have to get rid of this Nisoyan. We have to tackle the Nisoyan. Yaakov had the Nisoyan, the Malach of Esau. When Yaakov went to get his Pachim Ketanim, what he thought was the final Nitzutzim, the Malach of Esau came and tackled him. That was a real Malach. He had a fight, a physical fight. He couldn't just ignore him. The Malach was there to stop him. And he couldn't just tell him, Gate is under eight. He had to fight with him. So there was an actual involvement with the clipper, with the Yitzhahara, with the Nefesh Abhamis, who brings actual obstacles, which I have to get rid of. That's one kind of an Isoyan. And the purpose of this is what? To elevate, to transform these objects, these clippers, these sparks which are in this clipper, which are in this clippers, they need to be elevated. But then there's an Nisoyen which is not real. It's an Nisoyen in my mind, my imagination, a fiction of my imagination. Like a dream. Although when we dream, it seems to be real. But as soon as we wake up, we realize there was either just a wonderful dream and unfortunately it was only a dream or it was a nightmare. We say, thank God it was only a nightmare. But it's not real. What do we need to do when we have in this kind of state? We just have to wake up. We have to wake up and realize that it's not real. It's fantasy. And in my fantasy, in my subconscious, it seems to be so real that it is affecting me, that it is stopping me from doing certain things or forcing me, pushing to do certain things. But in reality, above a it doesn't exist. It's not real. How do you deal with this kind of a situation? How do you deal with this kind of a how do you deal with this kind of an Isoyan? There's nothing to deal with. There's no object. There's no situation. There is no person. There's no reality. I can't deal with it. The only way to deal with it is just to ignore it. To deal with myself. For myself to understand that I just shouldn't pay attention to it. It's something that is, needs to be ignored. And by ignoring it, it just disappears. And the, the less we will ignore it, oh, the more attention we're going to give it, the more powerful it becomes. The more real it could become. And the more effective it's going to be. And it's going to take me over completely till I'm really going to start feeling and seeing things. I'm going to start, the imagination can become so powerful that I can actually start seeing it. Although there's nothing there. Why? Because it works on my subconscious or on my consciousness. It works on my mind and it takes me over and I become frightened from it. I become overwhelmed by it or I can become excited about it, whatever it is. It could affect me physically as a famous story that he couldn't put on his shoe because his foot swelled from great excitement, from great happiness. In other words, actually has a physical effect on the person. It's just his imagination. Medicine knows today that uh, the thinking of the person, the tracht good, the sein good, which is only a thinking, has a physical effect. So says Avram Avinu here, I know this terrain. I know the way from heaven to Yerushalayim. He's going there, so he knows where to go. There's no water here. This is desert. This is dry land. So Avraham Avinu says, this water here is not real. 
It is only something which is put here to test me. And the test is not about will I stop from getting wet? Will I stop on my journey? And we say, look, I'm trying to go, but I can't. Right? I can't go. I'm sorry. Do something. Get away. Take away the water. Or find me a boat. Send me a, a, a rope to swim. Do something. No. It's not about me not only not stopping me from going there, but from even trying to do something to recognize that it is real. So Avraham Avinu says, Rabbani Shalom, I am walking. Not just because you told me to walk, because I know that this is not a real obstacle that I need to elevate. This is not some kind of a spark of goddess which is here that I need to deal with. I need to tackle it. I need to find a way how to physically go over it. Because if I'm going to do any kind of any natural way of coming over this world, that means that I recognize that it exists. And if I recognize Clipper for existence, then it starts existing. If I'm giving credence and I'm giving attention, I'm giving value, I give recognition to it, then it becomes real. It could become real. So Avraham Avinu says, this is just an assoyin. The assoyin is within me. Can I recognize that this is not existing? That's exactly what Avraham Avinu does. So Avraham Avinu says, Rabbi Shalom, I am just walking. And I know it will disappear. And that's exactly what happened. Now you may ask a question, did he get wet or not? We'll leave this out. So that's the idea here. This is the first concept. This is the first step of this Nisoyen. So the Nisoyen over here is, can Avraham Avinu find with him, within him the stamina, the strength to realize not to get influenced by any Nisoyen not allowed to work on his mind. And there comes the three days. The greatest difficulty, the most difficult Nisoyen is something that keeps on going and going and going and not finishing. Chachamim tell us about If they would be beating him then, beating them, instead of threatening to kill them, they wouldn't be able to withstand. And the sign of jumping into one time in the flame, it's one jump, and that's it. And the sign as difficult, as dangerous, even to the point of giving the person's life, but it takes a certain amount of time, short period. But the Nisoyen that takes a long time is very difficult to deal with. Why? Because you can start questioning. Is this really what the Ebishter wants me to do? Look, I'm trying to get there. The mountain is moving back. The mountain is continuously distancing. So maybe I didn't understand it well. Maybe the Ebishter does not want me to actually go and offer him Time has this capability of working on the person's psyche. Time has that capability of creating apathy, losing faith, losing koyach, losing trust, giving up. The longer it takes, the more the chance of giving up. So the Abishter is testing Avraham Avinu here in two ways. Would you realize, number one, that it's only in the soil, that it's not real? And can you also withstand the test of time? Test of time is one of the most difficult things. And Avraham Avinu succeeded. Even when he saw Marchik, he lifted his eyes. And he said to the Abishter, I get the message. 
I understand that this machik is the test. I keep my eyes on the prize, so to say. I keep my eyes on the mission. Famous story with a Tzemach Tzedek, a little boy, playing outside, who is going to climb higher on the ladder, famous. And Tzemach Tzedek was the one who was able to climb all the way to the top where everybody else was frightened. When the Alter Rebbe asked him, how come you were not afraid of climbing to the top of the mountain, or uh, excuse me, of the ladder, Tzemach Tzedek said, Zayde, my friends, when they were going up on the mount, on the ladder, they looked down and they were afraid of what they're distancing themselves. I wasn't afraid of what I'm distancing. I kept my eyes on the top of what I need to reach. I kept my eyes focused on my mission. I kept my eyes focused on, so to say, on the price, on the purpose. And therefore, I wasn't concerned with what I'm leaving. I wasn't concerned with what's happening at the bottom. I wasn't concerned of what maybe I'm losing. I'm not losing. I'm focusing. I'm advancing. The count up, not the count down. I'm going forward by Yisavom as Einov. And then he realized that this place, although it is Marchik, but this is the place I have to get to. And then, as we mentioned earlier in the story, which we know, Atta Yodati. Now I know. Now one can ask the question, why is this Nisoyan so much greater than the previous Nisoyan is? Wasn't the Nisoyan of jumping into the fire or allowing himself to be thrown in the fire by Nimrod just as meaningful, just as Mesir Snafish as going to offer his son, notwithstanding these details of the water and, 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 and the uh, distancing. But the Atzim Nisoyan is quite a feat. Why did Abish do not say then, Atta Yodaiti, why only now? And the answer is, as the Rebbe explains it in many years, I will be brief with it. A person, many people, gave their life for an ideology. A lot of people. Not only because Avraham Avinu was the first one, but one can give his life for something that he feels, if I don't have that, it's not worth living. I don't feel like living if I can't have certain thing. Why in Rahman Islam will people commit suicide? I'm not talking about somebody unfortunately who is not well. But same people who win, people who lost all their money committed suicide. Why is that? It's not just a matter of desperation. It's a matter that they say if I don't have this lifestyle, I don't feel like living. So it's not a heroic act, it's actually an extremely egocentric act. I don't care the effect it's going to have on anybody else. I'm concerned only with my well-being, with my pleasures, with my idea. And if I can't live within my idea, I don't want to live. So one could have said that all the previous Nisyonis that Avraham Avinu was willing to sacrifice his life because Avraham Avinu said, if I have to give up on believing in the Ebishto, I don't want to live. If I have to live a life, a Nimrod life, and being forced to do idolatry, I've been interested. It's not worth living. Stop the world, I'm getting off. But here's a different story. What's happening over here in Akedas Yitzchak? It is not just a test of Avraham Avinu's midah, Avraham Avinu's kindness. Will he be able to go sacrifice his son? But will he be able to act in a way which goes contrary to whatever he has been teaching, to whatever has been told his entire life? Because what does it mean? The Ebishter had promised him, this is your son. This is your future. This son Yitzchak, your beloved only son, your future generations depend on him. 
This is what's going to be your entire accomplishment in your lifestyle will be perpetuated through him. Now Yitzchak is 37 years old. And indeed he's shown tremendous, tremendous holiness, Kedusha. And Avraham Avinu is very happy with him. And he sees, yes, this is the one who is going to continue teaching the belief in the Abishter and bringing Elokus into this world. Now suddenly the same Abishter who told him, this is your future, now tell me, you know what, I changed my mind. I want you to go sacrifice him. This is not just a test in his midas. This is a test in his entire amuna. In other words, whatever he has been teaching, that the Abishter is MS, 100%, MS Lamitoy. No, what the Abishter said before he changed his mind, there has been a change. Now, an Abishter that could change his mind, could change his mind again. What would be if after his shechter he says, you know what, I shouldn't have done it. I regret it. In other words, this is an soy in the Amunna of Avraham Avinu. This is an soy in everything that Abishta told him. In his mind, there seems to be a contradiction between two promises of the Abishta, between two statements of the Abishta. Here the Abishta says, this is your future, now the Abishta says, go kill him. And then Yitzchak will not have children. Excuse the aside, in the States, dead people could vote, but they can't have children. So, this is the Nisoyan here that the Abishter is testing Avram Avinu. Will he be able to act even if it goes contrary to what he understands about the Abishter? Will he go, be able to go contrary to what the, seemingly what the Abishter himself said? And Avram Avinu has one word in his life. In any, whatever you say goes. Whatever you say, I'm ready to do. But the Abishta says this, now ki ato yodaiti. Yodaiti comes from das. Das means connected. Chachma bin das says, al in Tanya, but das miloshen is kashrus. In other words, now I realize, now it's obvious to you and to me. The Abishta knew beforehand where Avraham Avinu stands, but now it became real. The connection is one ato yodaiti. That everything you've been doing is because you're actually connected to me. Not because you don't want to live without it. And your life is not interesting living if you don't have your ideology. That's not about your ideology. It's about me. Atoyodati now does. You and I are completely connected. Your dati is spelled the yud in the beginning, das, and the yud at the end. Famous explanation, Dalta Rebbe says. The design of the Aleph, the Yud above is the Abish to the Yud at the bottom is Am Yisrael and the Vav is the connecting. The Yud, Yudaiti, is the Yud, the Abish to Yud, Avram Avinu Das, which is connecting them, says the Abish to. Now I know that we have the, you have, you are fully connected to the point that nothing will sway you. That's the story of the Akedah. That's the Nisoyin of the Akedah. Now, I would like to suggest we are living today in the soil of Akedah. Many questions. Three days? It's close to 30 years that the Rebbe promised us he needs a bow. Tafshinu Nalad, the Rebbe said, Mashiach is around the corner, Mashiach is here. The Rebbe told us, Avedi Saburim has been concluded. The void of Golas is finished. Not just by, by, by Yom Ashlishi, it's 30 days that we are being held in this limbo land of Havoides and Isyonis. Because the Rebbe said Havoides Abururim has concluded. So what is it now? Now is it not about transforming the world? The Rebbe said the world is ready. The world is ready for Mashiach, the world is ready for Gula. The wealth is great. These are the words of the Rebbe. We can't change them. We're not going backwards. We're going forwards. So if the world was ready 30 years ago, it is even more ready today. So we can ask the question, what is taking so long? And these, the time that it's taking could Chas Shalom plant doubts, 
within our Ramuna, and what the Rebbe told us that Hine Zebo, the Besura Sagula, that we are living the moments of Geula. One has to ask him or herself, am I connected or not connected? Is it Yodati? Am I fully connected to what the Rebbe tells us? Or is it just, you know, I believe, but. Says the Medrash, that the Abishter, after this, Abishter gave the blessing to Avram Avinu. Avram Avinu asks the Abishter, can I ask you something? Abishter says, yes. Can you stop testing me, please? Maybe it's enough. And the Abishter said, yes. Then Avram Avinu says, can I ask you a favor? If ever a time comes, my future generations will need a special privilege, a special intervention, a special merit that they maybe don't deserve on their own. Will you please remember what I just was ready to do together with my son Yitzchak and take this into consideration and this should be for them a blessing? So the Abishter says, granted. Not only will I remember, but every Rosh Hashanah, we're going to blow on the shofar to commemorate the Ayol, the ram's horn. And every Rosh Hashanah, when I come Day of Judgment, I will remember. Done deal. So Avraham Avinu says, maybe one more? Can I ask one other request? What is it? You said you're not going to test me anymore. Thank you. You're gonna remember my. You're gonna remember this experience for all future generations. I'm extremely, extremely appreciative. But one, one more question: Maybe you can stop testing my children too. I mean, just like you won't test me anymore, maybe you won't test my future children. This, the matter says, David did not accept. And we have been tested. Four thousand years of tests. 3,800 since Avraham Avinu, approximately. And right now, we are the last test. We are the same test that Avraham Avinu had. We have a test in our Amunah. Can I hold on firmly to the words that the Rebbe told us? We are living now the time of Gula. We already see the Pu'ulas of Mashiach. We already see the accomplishments of Mashiach in the world. We already see how the world is transforming. That's what the Rebbe said. Those are the Rebbe's words. But the, the problem, 30 years, that's the Nisoyen. So it is for us to know the Nisoyen, the issue is not about the world. Because really, when we look at the world open-mindedly, with open eyes, as the Rebbe said, we can see how the world is transforming itself into the coming of the Gula. It's not a time now to go into details. We've spoken about it, I think, a number of times in the past. But now is the time within us, strengthening ourselves to the yadati, that is kashrus, that commitment, that conviction should be so overwhelming, should be so permeating every aspect of our life that we just continue on our Lech Lecha. The Ebishter says, Lech Lecha, go to your inner self. Find your most deepest strength, Lecha, to you. You possess it. You have that capability. You have that strength to overcome the Nisoyen. Because if you wouldn't, the Ebishter wouldn't give you this, this, this test. Ein HaKadosh Baruch Hu 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 the Abishta doesn't come with any request that we are incapable of overcoming. And if we got a certain test, that's a sign that we can overcome it. We have the strength. But lech lecha, look inside you. Find it within you to be able to rise above it. That's our Nesoyen today. And this is, this is our last Nesoyen. And the Abishta will help that any second we will actually see the Rebbe here with us. The Rebbe taking us out of Golos. And I think it would be very nice to say hello to Avraham Avinu and to the Babisara.
see what they looked like, and tell Avram Avinu, you know what Avram Avinu? We were able to withstand this Nisoyen by following your example. As it says, my of is similar bonnet. The actions of our others is what gives us the strength. So Avram Avinu, indeed, we are doing exactly what you told us to do. What you showed us how to do. We believe, we commit it, we sing, we dance, we, we complain today, Bishter. All this is part of it. Not that we're complaining, Chas Visholem, it didn't happen yet. In other words, we, it's not going to happen. No, we complain, why is it taking so long? Even maybe the Avram Avinu only had three days to deal with. You're giving us already 30 years to deal with. Afshe Genuk. It's certainly Genuk. And any second in the Mitzvah Shem will have the good of the Mamish. We will find ourselves with the Rebbe, with Avram Avinu, and Yitzchak, etc. on the Harabariah. Good night, everybody.